The X-59, a new United States supersonic jet, is changing the game, grabbing everyone's attention. While we see fewer planes hitting those mind-blowing speeds and creating amazing sonic booms since the Concorde era, this latest aircraft is renewing passion for high-flying thrills. But what makes the X-59 so special and jaw-dropping? Join us as we explore the wonder behind this new supersonic aircraft that has everyone in shock. Supersonic flight is a marvel of engineering, but it comes with a big noise problem. When a plane zooms past at 767 miles per hour, it creates a loud boom that echoes on the ground. It's cool to hear once in a while, but if it happens often, it can get pretty irritating. That's why NASA started looking into ways to make fast travel quieter. Now, the main aim of developing this jet is to fly over communities and get feedback from the people below about the noise it makes. But before that, NASA has a plan for sound tests. They will place a bunch of microphones along a 30-mile stretch in California's Mojave Desert to measure the sonic boom and make sure it's not too loud. What a smart strategy! If these tests go well, it could make the way for commercial supersonic flights. That's a big deal, especially since the U.S. government banned supersonic flights over land for civilian planes back in 1973. In 2016, NASA reached out to Lockheed Martin and other big companies to come up with a test plane that could prove supersonic flights over land are safe and quiet, just like slower planes. The goal was to create a plane with a sonic boom of just 75 PLDB. This measures how loud the boom sounds and not the actual noise level. To give you an idea, 75 PLDB is like hearing a dishwasher for a split second. For comparison, the Concorde's boom was 105 PLDB, which is as loud as a chainsaw running full blast. Now that's quite a difference, isn't it? So, the engineers had a tough job ahead to start the development of the test plane, but interestingly, the idea for the X-59 started before 2016. Lockheed Martin had some earlier designs that helped shape the X-59. First, there was the C-100, which looked a bit like a shorter Concorde with the engine at the back and a V-shaped tail. Then came the C-435, with the same V-tail but a longer body, smaller wings, and a pointy nose. After that, they tried the C-506. They switched out the V-tail for a regular airplane tail because the V-tail made the plane harder to control, even though it reduced noise. About a year before NASA began working on the X-59, they started testing the C-603. This one had a canard and two small winglets near the cockpit, and they moved the engine back with wings set at different angles. There was also another aircraft called the C-605 in the mix, and it's safe to say that it sets things in motion for the X-59. Moving on to 2018, NASA gave Lockheed Martin a big $247.5 million contract to work on the new low boom X plane. By June of that year, the U.S. Air Force had renamed it the X-59, but there was still a lot to do before we could see if it worked. By October of 2018, NASA had tested a small model that was 8% of the final plane. They spent three weeks checking how stable it was and how it handled forces, and even used lasers to visualize airflow. These tests helped to make the X-59 design even better. For the next seven months, different teams at Lockheed Martin teamed up. They had experts in how the plane flies, reducing sonic booms, and making sure the plane could handle different stresses. It was a tricky job, needing lots of tweaks and changes to get the plane's parts just right, making sure they were strong but also flexible in the right places. Imagine the amount of thought and dedication put towards this project. The main goal was to make a plane that's efficient and doesn't make a big sonic boom. By November of 2018, Lockheed Martin started pulling together the first big parts of the plane in California. They finished assembling the main pieces by the next spring. 
Fast forward to winter of 2022 when the engine was installed in the aircraft. They used the General Electric F414 GE100 engine, the same one that's in the US Navy's F18 Super Hornet. This engine can push out 22,000 pounds of force, or 98 kn of thrust. Just imagine the power of the plane. Since getting the engine in 2022, the jet has been through a ton of tests. They've checked its weight, looked at the fuel system, and even tested how it vibrates on the ground. So what's this plane like? It's a single-seat supersonic jet that's just about 100 feet long. It has a sleek wingspan of 29 and a half feet and stands at a modest 14 feet tall. It's built to fly high at 55,000 feet and can speed along at Mach 1.4. That translates to a super quick 925 miles per hour. The makers also used an ejection seat and canopy from a Northrop T-38 and got the landing gear from an F-16 jet. Talk about getting the best for the best. When you look at the Concorde and the X-59 side by side, the Concorde was bigger and faster than the X-59. This old 100 passenger plane used to zoom at 60,000 feet, going about 1,350 miles per hour. But it was retired in 2003 after a bad crash in France. It's important to note that the X-59 is not trying to break speed records or be the largest. It's all about safety and keeping things quiet. The X-59 looks like a jet from the future, kind of like a sleek paper airplane. It's almost 100 feet long with a cool 34-foot nose and a 29.6-foot wing. That's all in one piece. The cockpit does not have the usual front window, and they have put the engine and air ducts above the wing to help keep the noise down. All these design choices are about changing how the air moves around the plane when it's flying, making the sonic boom quieter. But since there's no front window in the cockpit, how does the pilot even see where they're going? Well, there's high technology incorporated in the making of the aircraft for the pilot's vision. The pilot uses something called an external vision system, or XVS, to fly the plane. The jet has two cameras, one on top and one below, to give the pilot a clear view of what's ahead on the big screen. Plus, the XVS also shows important data like how high the plane is, how fast it's going, and which way it's heading. Sounds quite futuristic, right? This way of flying has some real advantages. With the XVS, pilots can see quick alerts or colored messages right on the screen, and things they might miss with a regular cockpit view. Additionally, once the plane is up in the air, it will be watched closely to see if it does what it's supposed to do. While it's flying, the plane will be checked to make sure it's not making too much noise. NASA will take the X-59 up with an F-15 fighter jet, following it to keep an eye on things, while making sure the sonic boom is as quiet as they want it to be. This jet that will be following behind will track the shock waves the plane it makes while flying. NASA will also use a special photo technique called Schlieren photography to click pictures of the plane when it breaks the sound barrier. And so you see, NASA has prepared well for everything. Getting the supersonic plane ready to fly has not been a walk in the park. Right now, the X-59 is in the middle of system checks to make sure everything works together smoothly. They had to pause for a bit because some parts took as long as five months to show up, and this delay moved the plane's first flight from December of 2023 to somewhere in 2024. But brace yourselves, because we're almost there. The X-59 is gearing up for its first big test flight soon, and if it works like they hope, it will lead to more tests, including one to see if Lockheed Martin has made supersonic flights quieter. If they pull it off, it could change the rules, and we might see some supersonic planes flying commercially over our heads sooner than we expect. Quite exciting, isn't it? Now, what do you like most about the X-59? Do you think such supersonic planes will be used for commercial flights? Share your thoughts in the comments box below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to watch the latest, most interesting news. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.